Can you feel the love on the spectrum? Probably not because what even is the spectrum? Love on the Spectrum, season two, yes! I'm enjoying watching it, but what I'm enjoying even more is providing my honest, autistic opinion, reaction, review. And on this video, let's talk about Love on the Spectrum, season two, episode th three. Oh, hey. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, because I'm autistic, and I was diagnosed as an adult. Now, since my diagnosis, I've decided to devote my time to advocate for autistic people, including me and my son. So, how do I advocate for the autistic community? Well, I create content. I do blogs, podcasts, and these YouTube videos. And you can find all of them online, my website, orionkelly.com. Dot com dot au. So check out the website for all the podcasts, blogs, YouTube videos, and a chance to learn a bit about me and maybe say hey and send me a message. And the point of all my content my website is to hopefully raise the level of understanding and acceptance of autistic people right across the planet. So if that's something you'd be interested in helping me do and you'd like to learn more, well, fantastic. Could you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Now, of course, as always, thank you so much to those that have already done that. I really do love and appreciate you for subscribing to my channel, watching my videos, sharing them, commenting, rating them. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. If you haven't had a chance, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, clicking that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell so you never miss another episode. You're also welcome to reach out to me on my socials. You'll find me on Facebook, you can simply click that follow button for the Orion Kelly page on Facebook. Check out my instant grams on Instagram. I don't know what you're supposed to do on that page. Photos, I don't know. There's very little photos these days. Anyway, you can check me out on Twitter as well. You know what Twitter is. It's about tweeting and TikTok where I have videos, none of which incorporate me dancing or singing but people tend to like the videos anyway. So check me out on Twitter and check me out on TikTok and check me out on Instagram and Facebook and all my socials. It's go time, Love on the Spectrum, season two, episode three. And let's start at the start, okay? Well, we're catching up with Ronan in episode three. Now, Ronan went on a date with Katie in episode two. And we start by the producer asking Ronan, Hey Ronan, could you please explain yourself in five words? If you know anything about autistic people, this could be a pretty problematic question. A lot of times I find these types of questions really hard to answer. Other autistic people may love them, and that's cool. This is my opinion on this video. So, I don't know. I also think if we're trying to, again, like I always say, I know this is a show with autistic people used to entertain, in my opinion, non-autistic people. Surely we can also provide some sort of insight, raise some understanding of autistic people by saying, Ronan, how would you describe yourself? If, if a woman asked you, tell me a bit about you, how would you describe yourself? This whole idea of in five words. I don't know how that's helpful. As is the case in past episodes, and clearly it's gonna be the case in, in all the episodes because it's made in one go. I can't change it from watching some guy like me doing a YouTube video, but there's more family interaction and more I guess, importance placed on the reactions and thoughts of the family members, the non-autistic people in the show. So Ronan obviously wants to share with his mum that he's been able to get a second date with Katie. Now that's great news. And again, like I said in my last video, there's nothing wrong. Michael shared the same stuff. There's nothing wrong with sharing with your family good news. I'm cool with that. It's when we start to get to, okay, now let's cross live to the family for their reaction. I mean, you know, it's, what are you talking about? They're adults, it's a dating show, it's about them, who cares? Now, I'm not saying this was a case in this particular interaction. It was a genuine, beautiful interaction. The mum and the son, both sharing the joy of meeting someone that you clicked with and getting a second date. That's a good thing, that's a great thing. You know, in season one, there were not a lot of second dates. You know, so this is a good thing, I'm happy with this. Well done, and I'm happy to see the interaction. The only part I found really uncomfortable was, okay, so here is, a 20 something adult man who has gone on a date with an adult woman. They've both decided they had a good time. He's called her, asked her out again, they've agreed, okay? So this is all, this is all pretty normal stuff. I wouldn't class this as over the top. This is a normal situation, this is life. It's a good thing and they shared that joy, 
But then at the end, it finishes with her saying, you're awesome. We can't glorify autistic people. Autistic people aren't overcoming the odds to get a second date. Autistic people are dating people and either getting a second date or not. Now, if your neurotypical son got a second date, I would not expect the mum to go up to the neurotypical son and go, you're awesome, mate, second date, you're awesome. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't. So don't say it to your autistic son. It's like we're being put on this fake pedestal, this illusionary pedestal. Wow, we have got some amazing exterior locations in season two. Hang on, that makes no sense. You don't need to do that kind of stuff like if it was a movie, but this is supposed to be real. Let me rephrase that. Michael and Heather go on a second date to a Buddhist temple. Who doesn't? I know who doesn't, I don't. Uh, I was born in Wollongong. That, you heard right, I was born in Wollongong. I know about the Buddhist temple. It's like the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere. It's beautiful, it's peaceful, I visited it. I'm not a Buddhist, but I've visited. It's absolutely glorious. You have to be very respectful there. I don't necessarily know if you should go on a date to a Buddhist temple, if that's the appropriate. It seems a bit strange to me. But again, Michael just wants to share his spiritual side. That's like, you can share your spiritual side. You can share your spiritual side while you're on a swing. I mean, you don't need to be at it. Anyway, Michael and Heather go on the second date. It's a great place. You can share spirituality and like Michael does, you can share some memorized Buddhist quotes in the comfort of your own lounge room, and you don't. Eh. So, yeah. Ah, good date. Good date. Hey, where do you want to go for a second date? How about a Buddhist temple? You want to go to a Buddhist temple? You want to take your shoes off? Yeah, that's a no. There's just something really strange about watching this date at the Buddhist temple. And it's got nothing to do with the temple or the spirituality, it's just the context of it. You can, you can share all these things in a conversation on a date, right? I mean, you guys could be, seriously, you guys could be eating a burger at a takeaway joint and still talk about your own spirituality. But I don't know, the way it's shot and they're holding candles and ringing bells and kneeling and looking and it's like, if, I feel like it's Karate Kid 2. Seriously, I don't understand what's going on here. It's really, it's just bizarre. It's, I've got a great idea for our third date. Look, and it's actually not that far from the Buddhist temple. Actually, it's right next to the Buddhist temple. There's a crematorium, and this is not a joke, in Wollongong, right near the Buddhist temple. On a third date, would you mind if I take you to visit the cremated graves of my grandparents? Would that be okay? And this isn't a, this is actually a fact. It's true, my Orion, my, my family, my extended family, are buried in a crematorium in a cemetery right next to the temple. I mean, this is just a, this is just truth. Uh, how about we go there on our third date? I can tell you about my deceased loved ones. Our mate Mark, dinosaur man. We should probably cut to five minutes of him talking about dinosaurs just so we can recap. No, he's about to go on a date. And guess what? The voiceover on the show says, oh, Mark's about to go on his first date in a year. Who cares if it's been a year? I've had longer stretches. <laughs> Yep, no bells being rung. So Mark goes on a date with Sienna. Again, I'm really annoyed by this. Look, they can't fix it in this season, but in, in the next season, for the love of God, can we ditch the stupid thought bubbles to get to know people? They're patronizing and ridiculous and completely unhelpful. If they're dating someone who is autistic or has some sort of disability, could we actually talk about that and provide the audience an insight into them as a person? Not stupid things like, likes the smell of cut grass and likes knitting. And I mean, these are sure great, but it doesn't help us in any way understand Sienna. It's, it's just bizarre patronizing caricatures, stereotypes of nothingness. You can print that. Absolute classic dislikes to use to introduce Sienna. Like she doesn't like a change of plans or you know, last minute change of plans. I guess most people don't, but I can tell you autistic people certainly don't because routine Plans, structure, predictability are one of the core things autistic people build their sense of normality, their sense of safety, their mental health around. So it isn't just about, oh, that's annoying. It's actually, for me, when, when ch plans change, when things at the last minute change, and I've planned out what I'm gonna do, I've built my week or my day or my you know, whatever around, and it's altered at the last minute, it isn't like annoying to me. It can cripple me. It's, it's, it's really horrible. So there's insight there that we never got to learn. And like the other dislike was, I don't know, I think it was rude people. <laughs> Who 
likes rude people? Mark and Sienna have an outdoorsy date. It's a really nice date. I think you'll enjoy it. And again, it's all about nature. That's Mark's passion. He, he loves nature. He loves dinosaurs, birds. He hasn't really strayed away from what he loves in season two. I don't know if that is a good thing or a bad thing. It's probably a good thing because, you know, they haven't made him go to something that potentially is a bit more nice on the eyes, <laughs> like a temple. I've talked about diversity and the issues around diversity in Love on the Spectrum. I've talked about how that was the case in season one and I talked about it early on in episode one. I think even in episode two, my review, I was talking a bit about how the diversity was um, being lifted a bit with Taya, who was one of my kind of all time favorite characters on the show now. She's just fantastic. And because of her background, I, I, I think, is it right? I'm saying she was born in Romania, she was adopted, and she lived in America and Texas, and then, and then moved to Australia. I think that's, so there's a lot of diversity there. An autistic woman, uh, she also identified herself in episode two, and in this episode as someone who is happy to date all genders. I don't wanna put a label on what she would call that, but in effect, in episode three, Oh, wow, do you see my tongue there? Kind of... In episode two, it was a, a guy, I think she dated Morgan, and in episode three, she dates a woman, and her name's Rosie. We'll, we'll skip over this real quick, but again, they do the thought bubble thing. I know I've made my point, so I'm gonna move on, but for goodness sakes, these thought bubbles to get to know people, they don't actually help you get to know people, they're just these weird entertainment things, and I don't think anyone uh, is gonna get any use out of them. I, get my, I guess my only point is, if you're, if you're ever gonna watch my videos and take anything out of them, one of the main things is, can you use these small opportunities to create small opportunities to inform and educate and raise understanding of autistic people rather than just these patronizing, irrelevant little thought bubbles, okay? And I've given you a thousand examples. The biggest example I can give you is no example, but a clear instruction to, to the producers of Love on the Spectrum to email me. Call me, get in contact with me, I will help you. Yes, I can consult, I can be a part of this. Bring the goddamn camera crew to my house. I've got a wife, that's love. Follow me around, I'll show you. Rosie Morgan is a fantastic opportunity and an insight into sexuality and gender and autistic people, which is something we really don't get a chance to talk about much and the wider community don't really know. I think a lot of people that aren't autistic assume most autistic people are asexual, as in are not sexual. Well, there's a lot more to that conversation and it certainly wasn't had in this episode, but at least it opened up the door, which is good. It's an important conversation to have at some point. All right, now let's move on to Michael, back to The Michael Show. If you're wondering, The Michael Show is an individual show within the show of Love on the Spectrum. Now, Michael's having a bit of a catch up with his parents because <laughs> about the next interaction he'll be having with Heather. Heather is coming over to Michael's house and they're gonna have the meet the family, meet the parents kind of scenario. So Heather will come over and she'll get to meet Michael and his parents. And of course, because we should, let's go cross live now to the kitchen to hear mum and dad and their insights and thoughts into the life of an adult man. Mum and dad. I talked about this in past reviews, I think episode two. The mum seems to naturally always laugh off in a really awkward, uncomfortable, dismissive way. Everything that Michael says that gives her that feeling, you know, Heather arrives, knocks at the door as a, <laughs> as a normal response, I would think. Michael has a bit of anxiety. It, it, it kind of, it, it's not that he's shocked or panics, but it kind of displays the feelings and thoughts and words that kind of convey, oh, she's here kind of thing, you know, like as opposed to, oh, she's here, great. You know, it's, it's a, oh my goodness, she's here. And again, the mum with no real need to, seems to laugh it off, push it away with laughter or joke or, <laughs> and it's, like I said in the last review, this is, it's problematic and it's really unhelpful. It's dismissive. You don't need to laugh stuff off because it's different to you. If you have an autistic son, they are different. So don't laugh off their differences, embrace them. The laughing is just for you. I don't need it. Now in this little sit down meet and greet, Michael and Heather, at a table with Michael's mum and dad. There's something about the dad that uh, I really, I really like. 
you don't see him much in this show, in my opinion. You see the mum a lot more. Uh, I don't know why we're trying to raise up this, you know, autism mum to be like some sort of sub star, but the dad has some really great insights and really great temperament. Like Heather talks about how uni can be stressful. And Michael's dad talks about, you know, how she deals with that. What kind of things does she do when she's feeling stressed? And then that provides an autistic voice, an opportunity to provide us insights into how she may de-stress. So I really see benefit in, in this type of interaction. And that's why I think there's a difference between using the family and friends, the non-autistic family and friends in the conversation and in this show in general, as opposed to going to them as the overarching voice and opinion of the autistic person. There's a difference there, and I don't think there's a good balance at the moment. All I can really do as an autistic person is just provide you with my own personal insight and opinion. I'm not asking you to believe it to or accept it. I'm not saying I'm talking on your behalf. So I wanna be really clear. I, this is just my reaction, my opinion to watching episode three of Love on the Spectrum season two, okay? I've said that, now let's move on. In the scene where they're meeting the parents, Michael and Heather meeting Michael's parents, the mum decides to give the dirt, she says, and to tell a story about Michael when he was a kid, a childhood story, okay? Now these embarrassing stories, I don't think there's anything wrong with these kind of embarrassing stories of, you know, when you were a kid, I think it's pretty common. Like when you are when you have someone that you've dated for a while and you, you get to the point of meeting parents, that's usually when they might bring out baby photos or stories. And, or, so I don't think that's not abnormal, but in the context of a, a show about autistic people and autistic adults for that matter, and then the mum telling a really embarrassing story, it, it started off with Michael saying, oh, this could be good, right? So he's kind of consenting, okay, but then she starts telling this really embarrassing story and Michael starts to become clearly mortified, clearly embarrassed. And from my point of view, looking at his body language, I think clearly withdraws the consent of this story being shared or not to mention aired on international television. But the mum continues and tells the story and, and you know, it's a, obviously, it's, a, it's an embarrassing story. The idea that she would just push through and continue it as if it's entertainment, as if, his childhood stories are so much funnier or more entertaining because he was so different. And yeah, this is, I don't, I don't see the benefit in this for Michael, for Heather, or for an international audience. And the longer this interaction goes on with the parents and Michael and Heather, the more uncomfortable it becomes in my point of view. It, it almost turns into a mob. It, it starts off with the mum telling a story and then the conversation continues and then it seems like everyone's laughing at Michael's expense or that's the goal. The goal is to, is to laugh at, at Michael and you know, he'll say a few things, not in a joking way, and that'll be laughed off or laughed more. It just, I don't know, the momentum of it kind of turns into almost like this mob scene. And yeah, it just, it just, it isn't appropriate. I don't think it's, it's right and it certainly shouldn't be aired across the world. Now back to the beautiful couple, that is Ronan and Katie. As always, you'll enjoy their date. They have a great connection, they enjoy each other's company. It even ends with an impromptu dance in the middle of Sydney with many people watching. And I think it's important to note that you don't see this kind of date on TV normally, right? You don't see Ronan and Katie on TV in this context. You know, we're watching Ronan and Katie, two very different people to people you'd see on standard dating shows, go on dates, have their challenges and experiences, and create connections and memories. So this is a big win for not only the autistic community, but for the community of people with all disabilities. It, because you can't just turn on TV and see this, right? So for people who can connect and relate to Ronan or Katie or whoever to see this, Go, oh, look, they are adults. They're dating, they're enjoying their experiences, they're having fun, they're building connections, they're living life. They can do it, I can do it too. You don't see this on your standard dating show. So this is where a show like Love on the Spectrum is so important. And this is why I would waste even a second of my time watching all the episodes, providing you with my opinions on what's good and what's bad. Because I can see the importance of this show and we need to keep getting it right.
because it's powerful. It can really impact the autistic community in a beneficial way. At the moment though, it's, that's just not the case in general. So we're gonna keep working hard to get this where it needs to be. But from the point of view of you know, showing the wider community, people they don't usually see on dating shows, dating, and having fun and enjoying themselves, I think is just fantastic. In episode three, Tao, one of the best new characters on Love on the Spectrum season two, catches up again with relationship, dating, coach, expert, whatever you wanna call it, uh, Jody, And they have a little bit of a conversation about the two dates Tao went on. We talked about the diversity thing, so Tao has gone on a date with Morgan and a date with Rosie. So it's an interesting conversation because Tao becomes kind of torn. Do I go with Morgan or Rosie? And they both have clearly very different selling points. And it's a conversation she has with Jody. They talk it through, she makes a decision. I wonder though if the conversation she had with Jody was as in depth or as informative as it could have been if she had a conversation with someone who knew a little bit more about gender, sexuality, and autism. It would have been a great opportunity to talk about it more. We've already said that conversation needs to be had, but in the end, she made a decision, and you'll see that in episode three. We are powering through these episodes, huh? Three episodes have been reviewed. Well, at least my opinion has been conveyed to you. I don't particularly need your opinion on my opinion, but fair enough, either way. Now stand by, because I will be reviewing Season two, episode four of Love on the Spectrum soon. So stand by for that video. In the meantime, catch up in all the other reviews and all my other videos, and I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.